What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. I have something super exciting to announce today, and that is I just released a brand new line of Make Your Story Matter merch. Yes, finally. I've been getting a lot of requests for t-shirts and mugs that say Make Your Story Matter, and I'm like, I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> now we have that, plus a lot of other cool designs that I'm a huge fan of, like my signature rock on and something special for my writers who love the three act story structure. Lots of fun merch to check out. I think you're going to love it. So click the link below this video to check out the shop. Okay, let's answer some questions. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and you don't know how this works, here's the deal. You ask me questions and I answer them here on YouTube. Pretty much every other week I show up with a video like this one and answer your questions. And there are two ways to submit questions to the show. The first way is to click the join button below this video. The second way is to go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group. And there you can ask me questions. You can also talk with the community there awesome community and make sure you hashtag ask Abby so that I see those questions. I randomly choose about three to four each time. And right now I have three really good questions that I'm looking forward to answering. So let's jump right in. First question is from Zaina. Hey, just here to ask Abby something that's holding me back from starting to write. Everyone is open to comment. Question one, how would you use the three act story structure throughout a story when you have dual point of views that are both finding different truths? Question two, also, how do you use the three act story structure in a duology where both books have different dual point of views, but the plot, external plot, is continuing with diff just with different characters with their own different internal conflict? Okay, so two parts to that question. I'm gonna answer the first part first. So I write dual point of views all the time using the three act story structure. So it's totally doable. It's actually really easy to use for two point of views if you break it down to be really simple. So where most writers get confused with the dual point of views, they get too detailed too quickly. So my recommendation would be to make it as minimal as possible to start. So what I start with is a very minimal outline, almost like a bullet point list. The goal is to just tell myself the story in as few words as possible. So I'll either list out all the plot points twice for each character and make two separate lists or combine them and write the protagonist's name before each plot point. I have a whole video on dual point of views that I think will help you out a lot. Check that out if you haven't seen it already because I go into the outlining process as well and show how to use that bullet point list outline thing. And really the goal here is to just stay very minimal, okay? And you can add more description and more detail later in your longer outline but for me, the, the way that I can wrap my head around it the best is to keep it very, very simple. That way I can see, okay, that's their inciting incident. That's their aha moment. And just keep it super brief and to the point. That way in the long term, once you have a longer outline that's more detailed, you can always refer back to the short, very minimal outline to make sure that you're still tracking and you're doing what you were intending to do in the beginning. Okay, to answer your second question, yes, you can use the three act story structure for a duology. You can use it for a trilogy. You can use it for an ongoing series. And I'm gonna talk about all of those variations in future videos. So keep an eye out for that. But in your case, it sounds like you have two books that are connected to each other, but in the second book, you're following new characters. If that's the case, I would let both books have their own three act story structure. If you don't want your characters to come to their ultimate realization at the end of the first book, then you'll probably want to end on a cliffhanger instead of an aha moment to pull your readers into the next book. So what you would do is have your supposed victory and then a disaster. And the disaster will act as an inciting incident for book two. 
Okay, it'll be like a second inciting incident. So essentially it's this setup for book two. Protagonist does what she thinks is right with disastrous results. So the stakes are higher than ever as the curtain falls on book one. But that's if your protagonist is going to have their aha moment at the end of book two. If you're gonna follow an entirely new cast of characters in book two, then you might wanna consider giving your characters from book one the aha moment now, or at least bringing them back at the end of book two or throughout book two to give some closure to their character arcs. Also, make sure we're going to care about these characters that we're following in book two. It can be kind of jarring to be following one cast of characters for a long time and then suddenly we're switching over to an entirely new cast of characters, but there is a way to make the reader care about these new characters for sure. There's a way to do this right. And if you want some more tips on that, check out my video on switching protagonists. Okay, next question is from Catherine. Thinking side and NPC characters. How do you build characters, especially side or NPC types, to be more than just the role they serve in the story? I know I can get ideas for who they are with the character profile template, but more meta than that, I'm asking about the balance and depth, as well as this process of weaving them in without feeling like a digression, but also not fe just feeling like a meaningless cardboard cutout, even if they are a beautiful one-dimensional thing. <laughs> That's a great question and I get so many questions about side characters and I think side characters are a tricky a tricky thing to navigate for a lot of writers so you're definitely not alone. The best way to give a side character depth, any side character, is to give them a journey. And I know I talk about this in the character profile, but it's not just about who they are in the present moment. It's not just about what they believe. It's about the journey they actually go on throughout the story and how their plot, their subplot, is kind of running parallel with the main character's story. So balancing that, weaving that in, like you said, it has to be there for, they have to be going on a journey themselves in order for it to be weaving in and out of the protagonist's story, right? Depending on the length of your book, you probably wanna have about two to three side characters with their own internal journey and internal conflict going on. Um, and by journey, Essentially what I mean is subplots. The more subplots you have going on, the longer your book will be. Which, by the way, if you have to add words to a manuscript, that's like the best way to add words, in my opinion, is to add a subplot because then you're adding depth and meaning to your story. You're making something matter rather than just like adding words to make it longer. Don't do that. <laughs> to me, what's really the ultimate payoff, what, what really makes you go like, oh, that's cool, that's clever, that's well done, is when the side character's plot ties in so much with the ending or the side character themselves is so important to the ending of the protagonist's story that the story like couldn't have done it without them. You know what I mean? So it ends up being necessary. This whole time you just thought this subplot was just like kind of unnecessary, a sideshow. Um, not distracting, of course, but its own thing. But actually it ties into the end. So that to me is the most impressive thing to do with a subplot is asking yourself, how can I tie this into the end so that this side character has a deciding vote in how the story ends and essentially the things that happen couldn't have happened quite the same way without them. Your side characters become essential to the protagonist's story, but they also have to be essential to their own story, okay? Every character is the hero of their own story, even if it's not being told from their perspective. They can't just be there because the plot needs them to be there. They have to be there because they need to be there. It's really all about giving your side characters their own personal agenda. Check out my video on side characters. If you haven't seen that already, you probably have, but for anybody who wants to learn more about writing side characters, that is a great place to start. Okay, next question is from CK. Hello all, I have a question for Ask Abby. I'm writing a prologue for the first time and I'm sure I want to have a prologue. The problem is it's three scenes over the course of two days and I worry it might be too long. So that's my question. What is considered too long for a prologue? I have thought to make it my first chapter, but it's the only part of the book that takes place a year in the past. Thanks for any and all help. It can be as short or as long as you want it to be. Literally, there are no rules. As long as 
the reader is still engaged with it. Okay, so it's backstory. Backstory is a great way to open your story because it's showing you something that happened in the past that matters today because it changes who the characters are today. It works, okay? People use it for a reason. It is a great way to open your story. So I wouldn't even worry about calling it a prologue. Like you can call it a prologue, but don't worry about how long it goes on for. As long as you're giving us important information that's going to make us care about the characters, it really does not matter how long or how short it is. Don't even think of it like a prologue, okay? I know a lot of writers think of prologues as like, oh, well, I just have to tell you this one thing real quick and then we'll get to the story and then we can start the story. But I feel like that's a terrible way to look at a prologue because then it leads you into writing a prologue that feels detached and almost irrelevant to the rest of the story. Like you could skip it and just read the rest of the story. So people don't like being delayed or feeling like, hold on, I have to tell you this thing and then we, have, we can get into the story. Just think of it as this is how the story starts. And if you wanna put the word prologue before it, that's fine. But focusing more on the content of what you're writing here. Is it going to pull the reader in? Is it going to hook us? Is it going to show us why what's happening matters to the characters right away? If so, then cool. Don't even worry about how long it's going to be because as long as the reader is engaged, you're good to go. <laughs> and I have one more thing to call out, believe it or not. I have like a video to call out for every single one of these questions, but this is actually a podcast that I recently did with my sister for our podcast, The Kate and Abby Show. We did an episode all about prologues. So check that out for some more tips on how to write a great prologue that sucks your reader in. Okay guys, awesome questions. As always, you guys ask the best questions. I hope my answers are valuable to you. If you would like your question answered here on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the join button below this video or go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Facebook group. I'm in there all the time hanging out with the writer community and it is awesome. The community is awesome. You can ask me questions, make sure you hashtag ask Abby and maybe I will answer it here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to check out the new merch store, link below this video. Get your Make Your Story Matter merch. I'm gonna get me some. I haven't actually ordered any yet, so you guys will probably end up ordering it before I do. How weird is that? <laughs> I'm just gonna have like a whole wardrobe of Make Your Story Matter gear and wear it here on YouTube. And I highly recommend you do the same. <laughs> okay, smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos like this one every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. And I see so many nonfiction authors do this. It's like, we have to have the preface and then the prologue and then the introduction. And then some person wrote a letter that we put at the beginning of this book and then the overture. <laughs> it's like, do we ever get to the book?